Cyanide is one of the most lethal poisons around, and there are many signs and symptoms caused by exposure to cyanide. While rare, cyanide poisoning is actually really important to remember as a healthcare practitioner. I'm going to give you a quick visual mnemonic so you can keep all the facts straight. If you've ever wanted to be the bad guy in a movie, I think you are going to enjoy yourself. Boss, he betrayed our syndicate. The cyborg is taking care of him now. The word cyborg helps me remember the word cyanide, cyborg for cyanide, or the cyanide cyborg. In fact, this cyborg actually calls himself cyanide since his record is just as lethal. And that's why you hired him. Yeah, you just sit there and spectate. We'll talk about our unfortunate victim later, but let's first discuss our cyborg. Half man, half machine, our cyborg has been equipped with certain modifications like nitro boosters. Yeah, these nitro boosters, or just nitro for short, give our cyborg superhuman speed. By the way, the word nitro should remind you of nitroprusside, a cyanide-containing drug used as a vasodilator. In fact, when nitroprusside is broken down in the circulation, it actually produces cyanide. Therefore, nitroprusside given at high doses can be a cause of cyanide poisoning in patients. Just remember our cyborg's nitro, and you'll remember nitro prusside for test day. Next, look at how this cyborg's using one of his nitro boosters to smoke out his victim. Yeah, he's using the fire and smoke to intimidate the target. This picture should help you remember another source of cyanide poisoning, smoke inhalation. Question stems may describe a person who escaped from a fire after inhaling a lot of smoke. And when you read this, just think of our cyanide cyborg smoking out his victim. Now, let's talk about how this cyanide, or I mean cyborg, does his job. See that door he's slamming shut? Yeah, there's no outside help coming now. For the loyal Pixarize users out there, a door is a recurring symbol for the number 4. So, this door being blocked should make you think of complex 4 inhibition. Get it? Blocking a door for inhibition of complex 4? High step score galore? But what is complex 4 anyway? Well, recall from biology class back when you were a young, naive pre-med that complex 4 is a protein complex in the electron transport chain. No complex 4, no electron transport chain. This in turn means no aerobic metabolism, which is not good. As you might imagine, this breakdown in aerobic metabolism means that your tissues can no longer use oxygen. To symbolize this fact, take a look at our unfortunate victim being choked. Yeah, he's definitely not using oxygen anymore. He's probably going to be hypoxic soon. As you can imagine, the inability of tissues to use oxygen leads to energy starvation. This clinical picture is often described as, quote, tissue hypoxia unresponsive to supplemental oxygen, end quote. What? Isn't that a contradictory statement? Well, actually, this isn't that hard to understand. Let's unpack the phrase. Your tissues are starved because they can't respirate, giving them the appearance of hypoxia. However, supplemental oxygen does not help, since the problem has nothing to do with the availability of oxygen. Rather, it's due to a reduced ability to use the oxygen that is available. In other words, plenty of oxygen gets delivered to tissues, but the tissues can't use it once it arrives. And that's because cyanide is sitting there, inhibiting complex 4. Just remember our choking man here to remember that the clinical picture includes tissue hypoxia. I also want to mention that this unresponsiveness to supplemental oxygen is one of the key ways to differentiate cyanide poisoning from carbon monoxide poisoning. These two poisons are similar in that they can be inhaled, and they can even present similarly with bright red skin which we'll touch on later. However, carbon monoxide poisoning importantly does respond to 100% oxygen, since the problem with carbon monoxide poisoning is reduced oxygen content in the blood. This is because carbon monoxide displaces oxygen from hemoglobin. This means that carbon monoxide poisoning can be treated by simply increasing the amount of oxygen available. On the other hand, cyanide poisoning is a problem of tissue utilization of oxygen. The ability of blood to carry oxygen is not changed, so increasing oxygen intake will not fix cyanide poisoning. This is a high yield point, and I guarantee you that you will need to pick between these two on an exam. All right, in response to the decreased ability of cells to undergo aerobic metabolism, there is increased anaerobic metabolism. So this is pretty obvious, right? So I didn't make a symbol for it. I mean, your tissues can't use the oxygen, right? Let's just move on. Next, take a closer look at our victim's face. As he gasps for air, notice especially how red his face is getting. 
Yep, this is here to help you remember the finding of pink or cherry red skin on exam. The extra red comes from all the oxygenated blood in the vessels under your skin, since your tissues can't extract and use the oxygen as we described earlier. So your skin looks extra red. Before we move on, I want to specifically say that patients with cyanide poisoning are not cyanotic. That is, their skin is not blue. It is red, since the venous blood is highly oxygenated. In other words, cyanide poisoning does not cause cyanosis. Yeah, don't blame me, I didn't name it cyanide. Anyway, cyanide and cyanosis are two totally separate things. The cyan in cyanosis refers to the blue cyan color of skin seen in true hypoxemia, since deoxygenated hemoglobin is blue. And as you already know, the situation here is the exact opposite, with too much oxygen in the blood. I'm only mentioning this since these terms confused me back in the day. On a related note, another finding is bright red venous blood in these patients. Again, the venous blood holds a ton of oxygen since your poison tissues cannot extract oxygen from the blood. And if you take a look at our cyborg's arm, you'll see red cyborg wire things that kind of remind me of veins. That being said, don't focus too much on this symbol because you don't really need it. Not to say that it's not important, it's just let pathophysiology be your symbol for this one. Now let's swivel forward to you, boss. Yep, as you stoically watch this disturbing scene, you do what every cool-headed crime boss does. Munch on a bowl of almonds. You disgust me. Your casual intake of almonds coincidentally helps me remember almond breath odor, one of the stranger findings in cyanide poisoning. That's right, patients with cyanide poisoning can have breath that smells like almonds. Because this is so unusual, this point is actually high yield. That's quite the nutty breath you have there, boss. So now we know the signs and symptoms of cyanide poisoning. Let's talk about the treatment. The fix for cyborg, or I mean cyanide poisoning, is coming through that garbage chute on the right. The hero always arrives at the last hour in these scenes, right? You see, the door was slammed shut, so our knight had to crawl through the garbage chute. Yep, our hero is a knight. This knight should help you remember nitrites, the first line treatment for cyanide poisoning. Nitrites oxidize hemoglobin to methemoglobin, which can then trap cyanide in the blood as cyan methemoglobin. By trapping cyanide in the blood, we can actually remove it from the tissue. This frees complex 4 in the electron transport chain, enabling cellular respiration to begin again. In short, we use nitrites to induce methemoglobinemia, which actually fixes cyanide poisoning. This is truly a case of using a poison to fight a poison. So pick your poisons carefully. Even though methemoglobinemia is not great for you, it is manageable and a lot less lethal than cyanide poisoning. But we can't just trap the cyanide in the blood forever. So how do we actually get rid of it? Well, notice the knight has brought a few souvenirs from his time in the garbage chute, a few rotten sulfa eggs. Yeah, these eggs have a pretty strong sulfur smell. Yuck. These sulfa eggs should remind you of thiosulfate, a sulfur drug used to eliminate cyanide after administering nitrites. Thiosulfate converts cyanide to thiocyanate, a form that can be excreted by the kidneys. In short, thiosulfate allows patients to slowly pee out all that cyanide, after which you can tone down the nitrites and treat the methemoglobinemia you just caused. But methemoglobinemia is a story for another video. Lastly, I want you to look at that clock up top. Look familiar? Yep, this cobalt blue clock pointing to 12 is our symbol for cobalamin, or vitamin B12, or vitamin B12 o'clock. A cobalamin derivative, hydroxycobalamin, can also bind cyanide in the blood and can be used to treat cyanide poisoning. And this cobalt blue clock at 12 is actually pretty easy to remember since every hero seems to arrive at 12 o'clock. I'm thinking V for Vendetta or the Bond movies. Yeah, there's just something definitely special about 12. This is actually a less important treatment, so it's okay if you don't remember this one. Just remember nitrites and thiosulfate and you'll be set about 99% of the time. Alright boss, looks like we've been foiled once again by the good guys. We'll teach them who's boss someday. Let's do a quick recap of this mission. Cyanide exposure can happen by administration of nitroprusside or by inhalation in the setting of a fire. Cyanide exerts its effects by inhibiting complex 4 of the electron transport chain, thereby blocking aerobic respiration. The clinical picture is caused by reduced ability to utilize oxygen and includes tissue hypoxia unresponsive to supplemental oxygen, cherry red skin discoloration, bright red venous blood, and almond breath odor. Treatment involves first administering nitrites and following with thiosulfate, although hydroxycobalamin can also be used. And that's it for cyanide, boss. I never trusted that cyborg guy anyway. Reminds me too much of the Terminator, 
who we had problems with in the past. Let's get back to Syndicate HQ, shall we? I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. For more videos like these, click here to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also check out the interactive version of this image at pixarize.com by following the link in the description. If you like what we're doing, share with your friends on social media, and we'll keep making great content like this. We'll see you next time.